I wish I'd have known we had a TV here because I've got some video we can show, but that's all right, that's all right. It had a dance floor that held a thousand people. It had balconies for another 500 people. They would get Count Basie and Fletcher Henderson in there on the same night and have them go out until six in the morning. Can you imagine? And a lot of that was a result of the war and people having money for the first time in their lives. Because remember, our parents' generation had the Depression. We all grew up remember hearing that about their food and all that. And then they went through the war. Those that survived the war got combat pay and women worked in the factories, remember that whole, everything shifted yep. because of women moving to big cities and that kind of thing. They had money for the first time in their lives. And also, um, as a result of, the civil rights thing really starts with the Pullman strike in World War II. It started before Rosa Parks, the first big movement forward that began to, you know, ever so slightly change things a little bit. Was that the soldiers had come okay. home from Europe, the way home. and when they were across the Mason-Dixon line, they were being told you got to move to the, you know, the you back of the careful. cars. And like, Fuck that! You know, I just about was shot up over there. I'll sit anywhere I want to, and so that kind of got things rolling because blues was a real, there was a real, you know, fight in the community because there were a lot of folks that considered blues to be devil's music. Oh yeah, yep. you still do sinful, and yeah, and and, and and yeah, you know, obviously it's the bastard son of it was rock and roll and, and hillbilly. Yeah, you know, um, really because yeah, to be right. quite honest, the, the the juke joints back then and the hillbilly joints, they were nasty places and they yeah, were rough. Yeah. And, and don't kid yourself, blues came up and boogie woogie piano well, came up in, in the roughest. I play it, I'll show you some of the stuff when they play it. The juke joints and the, and the chillin circuit catered mainly to rhythm and blues. Jazz went to the big cities in New York. That was for the sophisticated, you know, the guys that came out of World War II, you're talking Charlie Parker, you know, those guys that were like, geniuses, you know, and they played music purposefully that the other guys couldn't play. Old school children's circuit joints, there's not many left. There really aren't any because most of the ones that were around when crack came along became crack houses. Well, that's why and, they don't want us to open this one over here. Well, and that's why you have to kind of, I would say, go to work and let people know that times change and things change, and, you know. The old school thing, like we're talking about, disco killed it was the main thing, and, by, and it, it is just one at a time. You know, we're talking the 40s and mid 70s when, like, the guys that I talked to that worked in all the circuits here in Florida said, you can work five and six nights a week. There was a ton of work here, you know, because you had the palace there, and we had the Club Valley and Ocala, and then they went to the Cotton Club in Gainesville, and all these little spots. The Cow Palace. And, and the Cow Palace, and then we went to Club down, East. Right, and then, and then uh, the Club 436. Club Vegas. Vegas. We went to see if about the one stop and for another stop, so it's gone. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, I don't know. I mean, I, I was, I used to do a lot of radio work in Memphis <coughs> in the early 80s before the, the blues had caught. It was just as it was, just as somebody was sitting around going, you know, we could be making a whole lot of money off this shit. <laughs> you know, and suddenly it went from nothing to Robert Johnson ashtrays. If you know what I mean. You know, suddenly it was big, you know. Yeah. And, and, uh, and so, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, it, that, that whole thing was just kind of ignored for a number of times. But, it, but they're, getting, they're getting it right now. And I think I think the important thing, it's really important for all of us to, to why we have these groups like this and why we preserve the children's circuit, is all of this is a result of basically our generation and what went on in the mid-60s. When rock and roll music went from the association 
and Gene Pitney, and nothing wrong with Gene Pitney, I love Gene right. Pitney, but it took a much more serious turn when the Beatles came along and the Rolling Stones and the guys that were making, I heard Muddy Waters did the more Rolling Stones, you know, sure. that kind of thing. And the blues had pretty much died out at the places like the Apollo and all that. They were lucky, like Jimmy Reed would be lucky if he could get like two songs up front, you know. And then this British invasion comes along and these guys had an entirely second career. B.B. <coughs> King said, I broke into tears the first night I walked out. And there's all these little, you know, white college kids. Yeah. And I said, what? Oh my God, I'm in the wrong, you know, and he said, no. And, and so, you know, from 65 to about 71, Yep. Yeah, we were yeah. 65, 68. I, got, I went over to Europe, London, 68. And there was so much blues there, which just blew my mind. Yeah, and hey, well played. I was like, it's over here. Was, but it, American blues people, of course, you know. I'm it was the same right way as, as rock in Japan right now. They love anything rock and roll. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There. It's the same with Britain back in those days. Well, they I could smuggle in the U.S. records. And listen to the blues man. Because they didn't have, you know, I sell vinyl now. I sell collectible vinyl, and some of my biggest sales are, you know, they don't mind paying 75 bucks for a Muddy Waters record. You know, that's no problem. Um, back in the day, there weren't, you're right, they weren't distributed over there. The only way you could get jazz and blues and anything that was on like Chess and King and all the right, you know, the cool labels was if you had an uncle that was in the Merchant Marines or whatever, and they would get, oh, here's what I found out was really fascinating. The blues and the whole thing caught on as a result of art schools in London and England. Art schools were a phenomenon that came out after World War II. Well, Skiffle had a little bit. Well, Skiffle was in there, but I'm saying the whole folky thing and all that, you know, art schools were sort of a, you know, they have that whole class system over there. And right. it was something that working class, it was kind of the first time that the arts had been presented to like working and middle class kids as an option. And the art students were the ones who would catch and listen to these authentic, you know, they would get the Lead Belly records and all sit well, that's around. that's where Peter Green and, you know, them were. And that's where Mick Jagger and all those guys were art students at the time. And they all heard this stuff, and like you said, they went absolutely insane over it. What was it? Keith Richards. I was. I have a documentary, and he was an art student. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah. played guitar player. Yeah. And that's Lennon just, too. you know, that's just weird. Yeah. See? Lennon met Yoko at one of her exhibitions. And that's, that one of, that's one of those things you could never think about or hear about, and, and, and especially with that good weed, it's like, you know, <laughs> makes you think. No, you know, I mean, um, and so I, the thing is this, is that, that I think it's really important that we tell the story and we tell it correctly, and that our generations, the kids that have come along, the grandkids and all that, will get the story and get it correct, and, and find out who really did make a difference, and yeah, these guys were cool and all that, but you know, we were listening to people like Muddy Waters, and Jimi Hendrix and Commander Cody and all that other stuff that you don't hear on, you know, you, the way ran into James Peters in once or twice. Oh, absolutely. Well, and he, Lucky. He was a good friend. Lucky, lucky not so much, but James was really yeah. good friend. Can I say something for a minute since you sure, said that? Sure. We, we have an obligation to keep this on. Um, what we're doing in Dade City, we've got a big thing there. I mean, we've not only got that, we've got a place called Moore Minkins. Uh -huh. Which is named after a black educator. And his wife were in <laughs> And they've, re, they've done the school where they were going to tear it down, but the community saved it. Okay, right. my idea now is to link up both of those, the Cow Palace with this somehow, way shape of To link up the Cow Palace. Because we got the school where we could actually do something to where you could. You know, people, somebody like you that's knowledgeable could come in and we could make a difference where we can connect that back with the schools. You know what I'm saying? With the blues what, and the schools what, what, and stuff. what about the, the, I think if you're talking about that, it would it not be something that would bear discussion of, you know, the, the legacy of, the, of a place like that within the community itself? Maybe one of the things that we should think about is talk about who would have contact <coughs> I'm with WMNF. We don't really have much contact in the TV side of things, but radio-wise, you know, anything we can do for it station-wise, we're always, you know, the door's always open there, and on my show, you can call in any time, especially if you've got an event, and, you know, we'll publicize it for you. Cool. It's, you know, a done deal. Um, but I'm thinking somebody can get with the local TV. You know anybody at the NPR that's affiliated with the local TV, you know, or at the university? You're always looking for projects like this. But I'm talking about we need to well, they do, do something for Florida. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's it's just, it's 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 a no-brainer. Number one, it's history. It's our legacy. Number two, 
Florida was like the hub. It was the swing because you had, it starts in Richmond, Virginia and goes to Oklahoma pretty much with Indiana and some spots in between. But they, they came down here in the winter because it was warm and because the crops were being picked. And Irma Thomas told me that one of the ways they made their money was to follow whatever crop was being picked. You know, if they would do peaches here, and then they would follow it, and they would rent out the dance halls, and they would have, you know, the New Orleans cavalcade of stars. So at any rate, um, anyway, uh, you know, I'm up in Ocala, and I'll talk to Buzz, anything we can do with the radio station. Let me, you know, if nothing else, bring that to the table. I'm, I have a show on Friday afternoons, 3 to 5. And you can look at what, you, what what I did was I got a map, an SO map. Remember SO gas yeah, yeah. from 1963 yeah, before all these interstates were here. And you can follow 301 and then all the uh, even numbers that went this way. And that's pretty much where the joints were. You know they were right, you know right along the so. Um, but yeah, I think and 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 you had two spot in Jacksonville. Uh, there was Mr. G's I think it was in Daytona. Then you had a little place in. in uh, couple little places in Cocoa Beach, then you get down to um, uh, Fort Pierce, there was one there, then you get down to Deerfield Beach, Deerfield Beach is the home of Sacred Steel, you know what that is? Yeah, okay, they're, they're, that's the home of Sacred coast. Steel, and Ocala is the second home of it, but that's where the whole thing begins, it's in Deerfield Beach, Florida, and then you go down to, there was a, a couple places, and then you've got the Harlem Square Club in Miami, which is where they found that Sam Cooke recording. It had, it, it, it had been lost for like 20 years and somebody was going through a closet. And it says Cook Live Harlem Club and it was a live recording with Tim wow. Curtis. Un, un, unbelievable. It was like three months before he, he lost. I think the only place left is, is uh, Bradford Bill and that was, you know, that's been kind of resurrected. But, but um, you know, there was a, there was that whole chain and then there were the one, you know, you had individual one-nighters in there. But, but yeah, this was a, uh, it was, it was a long, this trail, as we know it, that rock and roll was born, because it's where the rhythm and blues, and they began to play it with a different backbeat, and the smaller combos were popular, because during the war, you had a lot of guys went off the war, and you couldn't support the big bands anymore because of gas ration. So these big bands got to keep shrinking down, and Louis Jordan was one of the main guys that started that, and he came down here, and the people down here drank a lot more, and they were a lot rougher places, and they wanted to hear that backbeat. They didn't want to hear that. They didn't want to hear that. They about, anything about words that began with F, they were up for, you know. So, yeah, 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 you know? And, and, and Wynonie Harris used to brag, brag. he said, I, I play down south where the women are strong and so is the whiskey. So, uh, and, and so, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's the, the, the more I study it, the more I ask around, the more it's kind of like right here, and I, and I would hate to see it not get documented in some way and and, um, and I find that when I even talk to a younger generation about it you tell the story whenever the story is told right it's a great story yeah exactly you know and they hear the music and the music is great and it doesn't matter what age you are Muddy Waters is good you know and it's the real deal and it has a sound to it and, and so uh, that's all you know I can complain the time you want but thanks for having me here and, and if I can help you all thanks anything with the thanks for coming you know, thanks for the education you know and, and I mean this is but we are. This, this is a mission, you know, this is something, this is, what can we do, you know, what can we do as our, as our generation in this act, when we have a little time, we are retired, we're, you know, and that, you know, and, and to me, this is more than just kind of a fun thing, this is something that we kind of can have. I, can I hear an amen? Yeah. Amen. 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 Can I hear a volunteer? <laughs> tell the story, tell it right.